A game traditionally played on a board, B-O-A-R-D, originally played with a pen and paper. We will learn this particular game utilizing the ladder. Welcome to Board Games, I'm Alberto. This week, we're learning a film starring Rihanna, but playing it as a game. This game does involve multiple players. Your reflection does not count, I apologize. Anyway, here are the supplies. A writing utensil. A comfortable place to play the game, preferably a place with a hard and stable surface. Something to write on. Preferably paper and you and another person you have all your supplies great Let's set up one both players using their writing utensils draw an 11 by 11 grid on their own piece of paper number two both players number their top row of their drawn grids 1 through 10 leaving the upper left hand corner square blank as you can see here, I previously made a mistake, but then I fixed it. Number three. Both players number their side column A through J. Each player must position the following ships on the respective grids without telling the other person. Each player gets one carrier, two battleships, three destroyers, two cruisers, one submarine. For the carrier, it requires five squares. For the battleships, they require four squares each. For the destroyers, they require two squares each. For the cruisers, they require three squares each. And for the submarine, it requires three squares. Just remember, ships do not overlap each other. Okay, I know. Setting up is very tedious, however, we've passed that. It's time to teach you how to play. The premise of the game is to sink the opposing player's ships. This is done by the following steps. Make sure both players have set up properly, having the ships of one player properly outlined on one grid. One player equals one grid. Number two. The players must figure out who will begin the marine battle. This can be done through a fair game of rock, paper, scissors, but any other similar game is fine. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's say, for instance, player one won that rock, paper, scissors game. So, player one will begin the game by calling out coordinates. For example, A1, or A2, or B7, or C5, or D3. Where he or she believes player two has a ship on. Number four. Player 2 will then go to the called out coordinate on his or her grid. For instance, let's say player 1 said A1. So player 2 will go to A1 on his or her respective grid. There are two options. If there is not a ship, then the turn ends for player 1. So for instance, if he said A7, there's not a ship here. So the player hit water, and player one's turn ends. However, the second option is, if there is a ship, player one will continue his or her turn until he or she hits water. So if player one said A1, there's the ship on A1, then he'll continue until he hits water. So let's say the first round he says A1, then the second time he says A7, he hits water, and it now turns into A1. Player 2's turn. Number 5. Once a player loses all of their ships, the game ends. The player with the remaining ship, or ships, is the winner. Perhaps this information seems confusing to some of you. So I'll show you an example of me playing the game with a friend to provide some clarity. Alright, what's up guys? So, I'd just like to apologize. As you can see right now, the audio has been cut out of this video. 
And the reason why is because while Jen and I were playing, my parents were coughing in the background, the TV was on, and we had just all this noise. It was difficult for you guys to hear us while we were playing. So what I decided to do was cut out all the audio completely and just have me doing a voiceover while we are playing. Now, I also like to note that the video was super long. So long to the point that the <laughs> the whole entire video in itself, this video that you are watching, would have been about 15 minutes. And I don't think you would want to watch a tutorial that lasts 15 minutes when you could just go out and play the game with you and a friend. So the reason why I cut a lot of the parts out of our game and it just makes a sudden jump to a you know a grid that has all of the markings in it well now you know it's because we just didn't <laughs> I don't want to waste your time that's pretty much it so as you can see we created a legend on the side this is a little tip that you guys can use or utilize in your own game. It's not mandatory, but it is highly recommended that you guys do this. The reason why, it will make it easier for you to track where your opponent lands or hits on, a, on your grid, as well as tracking your own steps as well. Because you don't want to say the exact same coordinate twice or three times multiple times you want to say it once if you hit it then you hit it and you want to use your time wisely when it's your turn because if not then your opponent will have an extra chance to well defeat you annihilate your ships so that's all i just want to say um i hope you guys enjoy it and enjoy the rest of the game and I'll see you uh, when it's over. As always, I hope the example is easy to emulate and the instructions are easy to follow. In the comment section below, acknowledge a game which you would like to learn. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and thank you for watching. That's all for now, this is Alberto, and you are watching Board Games.